Hey guys, it's Alex. Uh, I find myself making these type of videos where I'm just in front of the computer screen and I'm just reading over some customer complaints or something like that, and it just spurs on, uh, you know, a spur, spur of the moment type video thing that I think will end up helping people understand what's happening in the long run. Now, the video today we're talking about is density altitude and why your car doesn't run as good in the summer, like the dead of summer, than it does in fall or spring. Now. I am not gonna get into the weeds about density altitude, grains, available air, all this crap. I'm gonna leave it very simple because I'm a simple guy. You know, I wanna make sure I talk to the layman. I wanna make sure it doesn't sound like I'm talking over your head because the moment, and I've seen this happen a lot, when tuners start talking to the regular customer and they give you that technical jargon that the customer just gets lost on, the, the customer tends to think, well, he's just talking about my head and he thinks he's a smart ass and he thinks I'm stupid. I've been racing for 20 years. I understand that. Um, but on the flip side, just because you've been racing for 20 years doesn't necessarily make you an authority on how modern cars react to weather. Okay. So there's a lot of fighting going back and forth with, with vetted old school racers and new age tuners. Okay. Back and forth. So, real quick example of how it works, and again, very simple, very much a layman's term, nothing crazy. Let's say in the morning, on a fall day, 45 degrees, you have a naturally aspirated Mustang, you crack it on, and it, oh, it turns on really nice, and it's crisp, then you take it on the way to work, and you're like, God, man, this thing is rolling out, this thing is so sweet. So then you go to work, you know, your shitty job, you know, because you got to pay bills and then your wife has a shopping habit, all this shit. Then you get out of work, you turn the car on and it's now 75 to 80 degrees outside. Sometimes in fall, it, you can get those um, varying 40 degree swings in weather, especially in the Northeast. I know this. So let's say you leave work and it's hot, it's muggy. It became a humid day all of a sudden and the car just doesn't feel the same in the afternoon than it did in the morning. You went, man, this thing feels kind of boggy and crappy, but you don't you don't really make sense of it. You're just like, eh, whatever. The same thing is happening with guys that have modern cars, let's say a 2015 and up Mustang. Automatic, naturally aspirated. You have a cold air in it. And you go in November, let's say you just bought the car and it's November because that's usually when the new cars come out. Let's say you bought the car back in November of 2015. And then all of a sudden, you take it to the track with the cold air and the car runs 12.0, 12.1, and you're thrilled. Oh my God, I have a brand new car that runs 12.0, 12.1. Then you put it away for the winter. Then spring comes around and you think about it, you think about it, you think about it. Then around June, you decide, I'm gonna pony up for a tune. So then you go to the track in June and you're like, man, this thing's gonna rape. Everyone thinks it, everyone's telling me it makes 30 more horsepower. I can't wait to see what it does. And then you get out there on the track and it lays the exact same number down it did back in November when you bought it. And you're like, wait a minute, where the hell did my money go? I just bought a, a $400 device, a $200 tune, and this piece of junk is running the same exact number it did when I bought it new when it was stock. What's the first thing you do? You blame the tuner. Of course, you blame the tuner. You say, tuner, what the hell's going on? I've been racing for 20 years and this thing is, this, is running the same number. Then it ran stock. The tuner then tells you, hey, by the way, um, <clears throat> you know, it's June, it's 85 degrees and your density altitude is 3,600. And then that's when the racer goes, what? Density, what? Then see who, what the fuck's he talking about? Sure, it was hotter, but I don't, what's he talking about? Then the tuner goes as far because there's applications for this and looks up on the day you ran your stock number and it was negative 1000 DA. What does that mean? Look, there's just, it simply means there's more available air and your car is happy. And I'm sure the air was cooler. Let's say it was 40 degrees, 45 degrees outside negative 1000 DA, density altitude, the car is going to be happy as shit. But you go out there in June with a tune with the same mods and it's 3600 density altitude and 86 degrees and your inlet air temperatures 
on your cold air have reached 130. That car's gonna be lazy out of the hole, especially in automatic, until the air gets moving and the timing comes back. Why is that? Because when it's cooler outside and let's say your inlet air temperatures are under 100, let's just say, the car is happy, it'll see optimal timing quicker. And the more available air, more available oxygen in the air will make the car just burn cleaner. It'll just be a happier vehicle all the way around. But what typically ends up happening is old school racers don't want to hear that shit. They don't want to hear that shit. Bullshit. I tuned it. Stock it ran 12-0. Tuned it ran 12-0. Fix it. Now, as a guy who is pretty new, not new, but relatively new into this modern tuning things, I understand their point of view. They are wrong, but I understand their point of view. I get it. You're frustrated. You put 600 bucks that you thought was going to perform. Then, then I understand their frustration. So let's say, for instance, if you were a autocrosser or a road racer, those guys take meticulous notes. Those guys take notes on air pressure for all four corners, suspension setting, everything, because they go by lap times, okay? Lap times to them is everything. So everything in the car, they are taught, okay? Whether they go to a driving school or something, they are taught to keep everything consistent and the same. So old school drag racers try to take a note from road racers. Those guys have meticulous notes and do not play around. So this is the proper way to test it. Let's say you have a 2015 to 17 automatic Mustang with a cold air intake and you just bought it, you know, let's say you bring it to the track, buy your tune, but do not install it yet. Go to the track and if you can get two or three runs off to get you a consistent number, stock with a cold air or whatever calibration with a cold air, and then you get an aftermarket tune the same day, the same conditions, the same in the air temperature, the same everything. Duplicate the, duplicate the conditions you ran your stock times on with your now custom tuned times. And then you can at least have a case to say, I ran it on the same day with the same density altitude, the same modifications, the same conditions. And then if the car doesn't run any better, you have yourself a case. Think of it as being a lawyer that has to prove that the tune is the issue. Don't go six months apart, four months apart, two months apart. Hell, one week apart can dictate huge variances in weather and then try to blame the tuner because the car didn't perform when you went on days that had two completely different conditions. Don't do that. Don't blame your tuner. Don't be that guy. Blame your tuner if you do the proper vetting and then your tune didn't perform. But don't go six months apart, fall to wind, fall to summer, and then expect the same exact results. These cars are very sensitive to inlet air temperatures, very sensitive to grains in the air, moisture, all that stuff. Modern vehicles pretty much can take care of it. No different than a lot of people are asking, well, I live in altitude. Let's say I live in Denver, but I'm going to drive down to Florida. Tuner, how are you going to account for that? <clears throat> the same way Ford does. Ford doesn't sell vehicles that have a different tune in Denver than they have in Florida, okay? You can drive from Massachusetts down to Florida to Texas to Denver to, to Oregon uh, in, a, in a GT500, 11 and up, and not really change it, not change the tune at all because Ford basically took that into account. Understand, guys, not everything is the tune. Sometimes conditions play a huge part in the performance of the vehicle. Thanks for listening, guys. Hopefully this cleared things up for you guys that are out there getting into the modern cars and how tuning works. Talk to you later.